Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO composition tutorial. Um, I'm sorry about this one taking so long to actually appear. I was very busy creating a portfolio um, to, yeah, to, to submit for an application um, for a job. So yeah, um, but I'm finished with that. And by the way, this, this is one part of it. This is my female character render. Um, slightly better than the, 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 the previous one. And yeah, I, I love the way she looks at you. It's, I think I, I nailed, nailed that part pretty well. Anyway, um, today we're going to take a look at how to create a few more materials for our appetizer series, okay? Because um, it's been five days or so since the last tutorial. So as I said, sorry about that, but um, I just really needed to finish that portfolio. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you're interested, you can just go to my website, amadeocompositions.com, um, then click on English. And then just go to port. You can just see portfolio. Okay, so let's just open up a new window of Blender and let's open the file we worked on last time. And I just need to search for that real quick because I've got now. I now have a Blender two point six three and it didn't really copy all the path. So that should be under. I don't know. Uh, let me see the tutorials appetizer nine. I think that's correct. Um, and yeah, here we are. So today we're going to take a look at how to create the material for the bowl and for the olives. Or, yeah, I think you should, you should be fast enough to achieve that. Let's just move those two things to over there as well. And let's just... Actually, let me just see something. Do we have an additional camera here? I do not. So let's just move that one to the first layer as well. And then let's just duplicate it, move that one to the second layer and now we can work with this one so we don't accidentally change um, the other one which would be a shame. Okay so about the material for the um, bowl, it's actually quite straightforward. We've got a standard material, we'll leave all the diffuse settings as they are because it's going to be a white bowl. Um, about the specularity we're going to lower that a little bit to 0.27 once again with word ISO Okay, and the slope of 0 0.06, which gives it quite a sharp, a sharp reflection. And then we don't want to use sh any shading options or transparency options, because our bowl is going to be white and not transparent. And we are going to use the mirror, of course. And um, we're going to set it at 0 0.6 um, with a Fresnel of 1.5 and a blend of 1.7, okay? Um, depth of 2, we can leave it at that. Let me just think. Yeah, we can leave it at that. Um, and we'll leave the rest like this as well. Uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, this amount here um, defines how clean the reflections are, okay? You can see they become blurry, and this, you might think this is quite a cool effect. But just wait until you have to render this, because then all the coolness disappears quite quite soon, because it takes forever. It really takes forever. If, if you have just a slightly complex scene, if you're going for soft reflections, it's just a pain. Therefore, we're not going to use that. Okay, so... Um, subsurface gathering. Uh, now, if you want to make an animation out of this, you probably don't want to check subsurface gathering, because it's just it's, it's, it's a very subtle effect, but it actually helps. And it's very easy to set up because there's a preset here, which is called Marble, okay? And that actually pretty much fits our needs. So yeah, just go with Marble if you want to use it. You can see it is quite a difference, but as I said, it's not an essential. And if you're going for an animation, then you probably want to save this extra render time so you're a bit faster. Um, yeah, and this is basically already it. Let's just render this. Yeah, you couldn't see it. It was a bit too fast, but you can see that that short pre-rendering, um, which was to get the subsurface gathering exactly, and um, we forgot to um, get all the lamps. So let's just hit escape. Let's go to over here. Let's just with B select all the lamps. Let's just move them with Shift. Left click onto the second layer as well, and then let's just try that again. And let's hope it'll look a bit better this time. I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, now this looks fairly good. You can see this um, marble ceramic kind of 
soft shading effect, which looks quite, quite cool. You can see the specular reflections are all right, and it's also mirroring the things inside. And once those olives are darker, the mirroring effect will be much better. Um, so yeah, that's essentially already it for the bowl. The one problem we do have, though, and that's something I noticed in my other file as well, that's why I had to turn it up over there. You can see right now we've got three subdivisions, okay? But it only renders two. We have to set that to three as well, because two is not enough, okay? So now if we render this, let me just pause it again. Okay, and I just adjusted one thing that I forgot to mention before. Under um, error, in the subsurface scattering tab, go to point two. And you can see it now only takes 10 seconds, okay? And it's still, the quality is still by far good enough, okay? So yeah, adjust that to point two, it will save you lots of render time. Um, cool, let's just save that. And that's already it for the bowl. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at are the olives. And um, yeah, let's just take one of the olives and let's just hit the slash key to actually isolate it. And now this is going to be one of the uh, green olives. And this material now is slightly more advanced as you might guess. So first of all, let's just set up two, um, no, let's just uh, set up the colors first, okay? So the diffuse color is obviously going to, to be something green, okay? And um, let me just copy the exact hex code so we don't have to have too many differences there. That's the green we're going for. So if you want to just set it manually, you can see about 0 0.65 for RNG and about 0 0.296, 0 0.3 for B for our blue. And that's what we get. We can leave the intensity as it is and the shader type as well. Next thing is specularity. And I've got a color over there from that looks like that, which is, by the way, if you want to copy the hex code, EDFFA2 or 0.85, 1, and 0.35. Um, okay. And we're going with an intensity of 0.3. Type is word ISO. And once again, 0 0.06 as the slope because we don't want it to be too soft because it's quite an oily olive and oily olives tend to be quite to have sharp quite sharp reflections um, also we're going to add a ramp and what that does we can actually um decide how the specularity is going to be colored okay we want it so that it's slightly greenish and that it is actually um has a gradient okay now this color actually doesn't really do much anymore okay um you can leave it like this or you can actually set up the ramp as i'm going to do it in just a second here So the color we want over here is actually this. Okay, so RGB looks like this. And the color over here is something like... This. Yeah, that actually makes up our specular, refle specular reflection. Now the next th thing we want to do is we want to go and go ahead and leave it transparent as it is, of course, but set up a mirror, okay? So um, we have an oily olive, and olives that are actually oily, they tend to reflect the environment a little bit. And we're going to do that with a checking mirror. A reflectivity of 0.6, actually, which seems to be quite high, but that's all right. And for the color, we are going with this color, E8FFD5, which is something like this. 0.8 for red, 1 for green, and 0.66 for blue. Fresnel effect of 1.68, and the blend value of 1.59, 1.59. You could also uh, use more beautiful numbers, but it doesn't really matter so much. Um, all right, the rest is as it is already. Then subsurface scattering. Now, this is the tough part. Um, I experiment a little bit, and it's kind of hard to find the right values. So we are going to cover subsurface gathering more in detail in the first steps and preparation series. Uh, sometime in the future, it's going to take a few more days or weeks, actually weeks, more lo more like weeks. But I will cover this in depth. So for now, what we're going to do, we're going to work with an IOR of 1.1. And that's just how strongly the light gets refracted once it enters the olive. A scale of 0 0.01, which is actually... <clears throat> Um, how, how big the blur, uh, the subsurface scattering radius will be, um, that'll change depending on how big this olive is. Okay, now if this olive is in, 
a real measurement, it's like one meter, then of course the SSS effect will be different than it's just one centimeter as it is usually is. So we're going with 0 0.01. This is also important uh, dependent on that over here. So if you apply the scale, you have to set a different value over here. So keep that in mind. Now, um, the color for the subsurface gathering is actually this. It looks like that. And now about the RGB radius. Um, this kind of tells you how much a certain color is being blurred. And let me just show you one thing. Um, you can see something over here. You can see that um, right now this this toothpick tr throws a shadow onto this olive. And you can see that this area actually appears slightly reddish. Okay, And um, that is, at least I believe so, that is because the in my original file, I set the red radius to be bigger than the other radiuses. And that is important because you can sometimes notice the slightly reddish touch on olives if you have a shadow. It's kind of hard to explain. But just set that to about 3.6. 3 then the blue radius for the green to about 1.4. And blue 0.68. Like this. Okay. And... Um, a scattering weight front and back. Um, we can leave that, leave that as it is because uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just um, how much it scatters to the front and to the back. Now we could actually turn back to zero, I believe. Uh, let's just try that. Usually it works because it's just we just see the front from our perspective. Let's just, let's just zoom in a little bit. Slash key, zero. It's like the camera. Zoom in a little bit like this. As you can see, all the others have the exact same material, so now that's what it looks like. Oh, and actually, one last thing we forgot. We also need to adjust the error to point 0.2 as well, because otherwise it just take much more time for nothing. And I think I actually um, set it to a lower value in my final uh, scene, which is unnecessary and we'll probably be able to render this much faster than my final scene. At least I hope so, because 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes is a bit too much in my opinion. But let's just see how that turns out. And I would say this looks fairly good. Let me just pause the recording. Okay, so it finally finished after 1.5 minutes. And the olives, they already look quite good. Of course, they are still way too even, and they look like polished marbles. But we're going to take care of that in a second. Uh, I like the SSS effect, and yeah, essentially that's already what we need for now. So, now about the um, displacement, or actually the bump mapping. We're going to over here, and we create a new texture, okay? And don't delete this one, because that's actually the text we use to actually displace, to use the displacement modifier. But now we're going to create an additional texture, and this one's, uh, we're going to call this one bump underline mapping. Okay, and we are going for a cloud texture. Okay, um, this one, and we're using the black and white values over here to actually uh, displace the surface, but we are not actually going to displace the geometry, okay? For those of you who don't know what bump mapping is, it's just a way to shade the surface as if it was ir irregular or bumped, but uh, without actually creating geometry and therefore saving a lot of render time. So we're going with a... Um, let's see... Actually, with a, we can leave all those things as they are right now. And then we're just going to change under influence, we're going to change the normal, okay? And we're going to change that according to 0.15, okay? And we're also going to call, uh, influence the color a little bit with 0.2, okay? Um, I'm actually unsure if that's a good idea, but we'll see in just a second. Let's just render that again and let me pause the recording. Okay, so... Um, um, that finished after 1.5 minutes again. What a surprise. You can see now the server is quite uneven. It looks bumpy. It looks much more realistic. And yeah, I'm not quite that happy with the specular reflections. They probably could be a bit sharper, but I think once we render it from a further distance, it will look much better and much more like this because I'm actually using the exact same values. Uh, yeah, we'll see. 
if it doesn't work we can still change it and yeah if you don't like it just uh, adjust yours the way you want until you have what you like okay now we're going to add a second texture actually and we're going to create call this second texture um, what, what should we call it um, let's call it additional bump come on man here we go uh, bump underline mapping 2 okay we're just going to uncheck that we're going to check normal of point 0.1 uh, point zero 0.01 actually just a very faint um, bump mapping and we're going to make uh, a few adjustments here first of all under color we're going to check ramp and then we're just going to take this part we're going to move that over there just around right there and then we're going to bring that one closer as well to increase to increase the contrast to something quite extreme something like there and now we're actually going to set the scale the size to 0 0.01 or actually that is probably not quite it's a bit too small let's go with 0 0.1 yeah that looks much better that looks much better okay and now let me just do some, one thing i don't want to wait another one and a half minutes so we're just going to use that slash key 0 f12 and that should render much faster and as you can see this was not quite a great idea let's just um bring everything back let's shift select the lamps and then let's hit slash again and f12 and that is much better let me see if that is a good job yeah it just adds this additional uh, little artifacts and what they're actually supposed to do in my opinion they're supposed to fake those little pieces that are sometimes in the oil you know little artifacts and let's just make it a bit more uneven now this is a bit too sharp so let's just go with a slightly less contrast with imagery a slightly smaller contrast like this and this looks fairly good all right now, as it's a close-up, it looks like it's a quite a dry olive. So we, what we have to do here, we could just um, set the slope to something lower. Let's just, under specular, set the slope to 0 0.04. And that again. Okay, that didn't work. Sometimes you have to hit the slash key again to, twice in order to render again for just the selection. Otherwise, just will it'll just render everything after all, no matter... Don't not really, I do not really know why that is. Anyway, okay, this looks actually quite a bit better. A much sharper reflections, much, much, it looks much more wet. Of course, you can tell that there's not actually oil on it, but that's just because we're so close to the olive. Okay, it will be different in our final scene. Okay, so that's essentially the, already it for the olive material. However, we also have dark olives, okay? So, what we're going to do now, we're going to select all the olives you want to be dark olives. This one, this one, this one, and this one. We are going to click plus on this material there, okay? So now this is no longer olive screen, but it's olive screen 0 0.001. We're then call, going to call this one olives black, okay? And then we're going to hit control L and the materials. And that will just link, make sure that all those four olives have the exact same material, okay? And now we're going to make a few adjustments here as well. We're going to um, change the color first of all to... 706A45, which is slightly darker. And we're also going to change the specular reflections to something colorful, actually. I found this works best. A slightly pinkish reflection type. Um, intensity of 0.15 and the slope of 0 0.06, actually. Like this. And um, no ramp, actually, no ramp. Um, then the mirror is at point 0.4. Point 0.4. The color actually stays the way it is. Everything else stays the same as well. And for subsurface gathering, finally, we've got, let me see, a slightly different setup. Okay. So we're going with a much bigger um, red radius of 11.6. Then with um, 
a green radius of three point actually it's four it's even four four and one point seven five over there now I just noticed one thing <laughs> one mistake I made you can see this slightly reddish touch over here and that is actually the texture we applied because I don't really know why I did that in the other file I set it up differently so it worked we have to uncheck the color or we have to make sure that it's actually black and the way we can do it we can do it like this or we could just simply disable it do we really need the color let me just think it will give a little bit of variation right okay let's let, let's leave this at color let's make sure this is not pink but this is actually a brownish color something like that shouldn't be too bad okay now let's just re-render re this Yep, that looks much better. Okay, cool, problem solved. So um, in case that went a bit too fast for you, uh, what I did, I, I used this texture there. And I also checked not, not only normal mapping, but also color. But I forgot to um, consider that it actually takes... Um, actually, I made a mistake again. Let me just see. I only need to change that color. Let me see. Let's do that again. Okay, once again. Um, F12, now let's once again see what that looks like. Okay, now that pinkish touch is gone, it looks much better. Cool. Um, okay, so once again, an explanation because that really was a bit um, confusing right now. I previously had this olive, right? And then I used this bump mapping, uh, this bump mapping texture, and um, I set it to bump map, to normal map, and to color, okay? But down here, it, it actually uses, if I don't sp um, use the ramp or some other other mean to um, set the color, it will actually use this color, and that was pink. And therefore, we had the pink texture on our olive, which we don't want. And then I duplicated the material and added it to the black olives, and then we had the pink texture there as well. And then I adjusted the pink texture, and then I re-rendered this olive. And then I thought, that, does, that doesn't look too bad, because it was just a very subtle effect. But then I noticed that I actually changed the color of this olive, so then I also changed it over here and re-rendered it, and now it's actually all right. So just make sure that on your bump mapping texture, that you have on both olives, the color is set to brown if you have color checked. You can also just uncheck that, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but I think it gives you a little bit of variation, which is quite cool. Um, okay, so back over here. We've got those things set up. And now about the color, actually. Um, let me just see if that's the same one. No, it's not. The color is going to be something like this. Slightly yellowish thing, so they don't become too dark. And let me just see, we can also just leave that at a point 0.2 and the back actually on zero, okay? Because as I said, the back is just um, the back side of the olive where there is subsurface gathering going on over there because you could actually see the subsurface gathering in the mirror when it's mirrored over here. But um, yeah, that's not really something you notice and it will really take more time. Um, one other thing also, receive transparent and there receive transparent as well. It's just not really important because we don't have the glasses over here. They don't actually occlude your olives, but um, if you want to make an animation, then you suddenly might run into trouble otherwise, and it doesn't really improve or increase your render time so much. So cool, I guess that's basically it for the olives as well. Let's just re-render that. And let me just pause the recording. Okay, so um, I finished rendering. And I just noticed something, those olives, they are not quite dark enough. Um, and I think the problem could be, let me just see. What could the problem be indeed? Everything is set up the same way out in the other file. Give me just a second here, I will um, check back with you in just a second. 
okay, Emma, I couldn't find a difference with exactly the exact same material. Um, let's just leave it like that because we are going to change the color with the color collection nodes, color correction nodes in the compositor, and maybe that will actually make that much of a difference. Um, I'm not quite sure anymore. It's been a while. So yeah, we can still adjust it later on as well. Um, okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, we created the material for the bowl and for the olives. And th in the next tutorial, we're going to create the in the next tutorial, we're going to create the material for the oil and for the pimento or pit, as it's called in English. I know that now. <clears throat> so yeah, and for the toothpicks as well, because the toothpicks are actually also quite simple. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any kind of questions or comments, please post them in the comment sections below all the videos. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.